welcome to the Overlap Essentials tutorial. In this animation, I have an orange sphere animating in position. What I'd like to do is overlap all five of these layers. I'm going to select all of them and click the overlap button. It recognizes that position is animating and if I want to go into these options here, I can get more control over the overlap. First, I'm going to choose to rename the driver, and you can tell from this tooltip what it's going to do. Let's see if it adds dash driver to your driver layer. It just changes the name uh, so you can recognize it more easily. Another way you can recognize your driver is by colorizing the labels. So if I click colorize labels, it gives me the uh, choice of colors. I'm going to stick with the defaults of coloring the driver layer red and the driven layers yellow. Uh, that's good for now. I'm going to actually uh, turn this on later, but I want to demonstrate what uh, the default nature of overlap is. So if I click on OK, you can see all of the driven layers match the position, the start and end position of the orange sphere. So I am getting overlap, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted the layers to be distributed as I had them originally. So I'm actually going to click this clear button here and I'm going to do the overlap one more time. Let me click on overlap, click on the preferences panel here, and then this is what I want, maintain original. And uh, uh, I'm sure you can probably see that there, I think it's getting cut off of the recording, but uh, these all have tool tips in case you get a little lost on what each one of these do. So I'm going to click OK. And then if I play the animation, you can see that now they've stuck to their original position and they're overlapping by adding the Y of the orange sphere to their original position. Also, I wanted to point out that this, well, we have the renamed driver layer. The layer is red and then the driven layers are yellow. And if I click on the uh, driver layer, you can see that there's this effect called frame delay that's been added. And that controls how many frames are going to go by before this animation is applied to the next layer. So if I go to one, two, th or sorry, three, four, five, then the white sphere is going to start. And then 10, this one, and so on. So the cool thing about these being driven by expressions is I can change this dynamically. So let's say I want to change this to two and now I can play my animation and they are overlapping by two frames. In the next lesson, I want to show you the controls offset and factor by index. For this example, I have keyframes on the position, scale, and opacity of my top layer. If I click overlap, you can see that the top layer will be the driver, that the type of overlap is layers. Then also we have the keyframe properties, position, scale, and opacity appearing here. Now the reason for that is, well, first they were keyframed on the top layer, but also all five of these layers share those properties. This is why it's the overlap shared properties window is all five of them have position, scale, and opacity. So uh, that's a, a good lesson to learn in case you want to overlap effects or things like that, layer styles. You need to make sure that all of your layers have those same properties or else they won't show up here. So uh, here we're able to, if we wanted to just overlap the scale, for example, we can click none and then turn on one of them. But I'm gonna turn them all on by clicking this button and then going to my preferences panel and uh, in the last example, we used the maintain original uh, checkbox to uh, keep that distribution that we have going in the X. But I want to turn it off in this example and then check the offset control and factor by index control. Then I'm going to click OK. And just like in the last example, the driven layers, if I go to the uh, position, you can see match the driver layers values exactly. So the offset and factor controls allow us to get some differentiation between the driver layer and the driven layers. So for example, if I was to go uh, and add 300 
in the X of this position offset, all of the driver layers, or sorry, all of the driven layers will have 300 more in their X than the driver layer. Same thing for scale. If I was to go to the scale offset and enter minus 15 in the X and Y of this 3D point uh, expression, whoops. And then let's go here. So all of the uh, driven layers are 15% less than this 40%. And then same thing with the opacity. If I was to go minus five, then all of the driven layers are 5% less than the driver layer. Okay, so that is offset. Now I'm gonna undo and take a look at factor. So when overlap was run, each of these driven layers was assigned an index. For the first layer, first driven layer, that's one, the next one's two, third one's three, etc. So whenever I go to position factor and let's say do, well, I'll make it a uh, more or an easier number to work with, 300, for example. And then if I twirl open my position now, you can see that each one of these has a factor of 300. And the factor um, is, it's multiplying whatever this value is here by the index. So this one was one, so it's going to be one times 300. So we're adding that to the driver layer's value. So we get 654. This one is 600 more, this one's 900 more, this one's 1200 more, etc. So that's how factors work. Same thing with scale. If I was to go minus five, minus five, you can see that they're incrementally getting smaller, these driven layers. And we can take a look at this scale here. And this is five less, this is 10 less, this is 15 less, etc. Same thing with opacity. If I went minus five and then opened up the opacity, we get five less, 10 less, 15 less, 15 less, or sorry, 20 less. Okay, and then, uh, uh, so that's offset and factor by index. I also wanna show you one other uh, kind of neat thing that was a, wasn't expected, but um, you can use this position factor to get some cheap uh, 3D effects. So if you want to maybe create a lens flare or um, I don't know, just kind of get some uh, 3D distribution kind of appearance going, you can use these factors and you don't have to use the 3D engine which can be processor expensive. And, um, and yeah, so it's a, uh, a, a neat thing to play around with. In the next lesson, we'll look at the invert and index controls. For this example, I have the position and scale properties animating on sphere one, the top layer. If I scrub through, you can say, see that it's going down in position and uh, scaling up. Okay, so if I select all, the, all of the layers and then click on the overlap button, those animating properties are gonna appear in my shared properties window. And if I open up the preferences panel, I'm going to uh, keep these checkboxes checked. Factor by index, invert control, and index control. Uh, I'm also going to uh, have maintain original unchecked. I'll click OK. And as in previous lessons, whenever I have maintain original unchecked, it snaps to the exact same values as the driver. So what I want to do is uh, use the factor, the position factor, to distribute these layers. And then whenever I scrub through the animation, you can see that those spheres are uh, animating with overlap. Okay, so the reason why I'm grouping index and invert controls into one lesson is because these are actually controls that are added to the driven layers as opposed to the driver layer as in previous lessons. So whenever this script is run, the each driven layer is assigned an index and that controls when the overlap happens. So uh, driven layer one, uh, is index one, driven layer two is index two, etc. 
So if I wanted to have this animate at the same time as the driver, I could actually set this index to zero. And if I move my current time indicator, you can see that this is moving along with the driver. So this is powerful in, in the case that maybe you don't want to use uh, this script for just doing overlap. You could use it for distribution, uh, uh, for factoring, uh, scale, anything like that. So uh, it makes it very powerful to have uh, these expressions uh, in your tool set. So uh, what I'm also going to show you is if we have um, the factor set to the same value as the index, you can see that that's going to actually jump back to the same uh, factor index as the driver, so it's not going to actually add that 315 offset in the in the x dimension. And then also, if I for some reason wanted this to um, be in one of the other factor index positions, I could do that with this control here. So with this index control. So it just gives you some more ways to customize your animation, or if you want to change the order in which these things animate after you've uh, run through an animation one time. So it uh, gives you flexibility. So I'm gonna actually set all of these to animate at the same time as the driver by setting all of their overlap indices to zero. And then I'm going to uh, invert the sphere two and sphere four. So now whenever I scrub through this animation, you can see that Rather than going down and scaling up, these inverted spheres are scaling down and moving up in position. So it's just gonna do uh, take the whatever the value is that it's scaling up and then invert it. So it's gonna, if this is going from 40% to 60%, this is gonna go from 40% to 20%. Okay, that is how you use the invert and index controls. In the next lesson, we'll look at auto-orient. For this example, I've drawn a path, just a mask path with the pen tool on a solid. And this has these Bezier handles. And so I'm going to grab this mask path, copy it, and then paste it into the position of the top layer, the arrow uh, one. And you can see that it's creating a motion path, but it's but the arrow is not orienting along the motion path. So if I want to fix this, I can just grab all of my layers, click on overlap, and in the preferences panel, if I open that, I'm going to leave auto orient checked and click OK. I'll get this dialog asking me if I want to turn it off or orient it along the path. I'm going to say orient along path, OK. And there we go. All of my arrows are orienting along the motion path. So uh, something to be aware of is a lot of ex a lot of expression-based off time offsets will not work uh, appropriately uh, with auto orientation. For some reason, when uh, these uh, offset arrows, these driven layers hit this last state, a lot of times they'll jump and they'll start pointing at the wrong direction. So using uh, an expression that I found on Dan Ebert's website, motionscript.com, I was able to find a way to do this with the rotation. So all of these layers, just uh, to be aware, if you have auto orient set, it's going to put an expression in the rotation. So you won't actually be able to overlap the rotation if you're using auto orient. So something to be aware of. So uh, we can also auto orient in 3D. And so I'm going to uh, switch over to this auto orient 3D example. And I have this orange arrow animating in a circle and I'm gonna grab all of these layers, click on overlap, same settings as the last time, click on okay, and it's gonna ask me, I have another option this time, if I wanna to orient towards camera, uh, that would uh, keep all of the arrows, their 
bodies would always be facing the camera. I don't want that. So I'm just going to say orient along path. And we get a nice auto orientation along the motion path. So in this example, in the uh, 3D example, we get an expression uh, placed on the orientation of uh, these 3D layers. So it, if you wanted to uh, use the rotations to overlap in other directions, you could. So that is auto orient. In the next lesson, we will take a look at overlapping shape layers. For this example, I have a shape layer that has nine shapes in it. And on my top shape, this ellipse one, I'll uh, press U and take a look at its animated properties. First, I have a keyframe on size and a keyframe on anchor point. And the reason for that is I just want to bring these controls up with the offset and factor controls. I, I'm not actually going to animate those, but uh, it's a nice way to bring the controls into, uh, in from overlap. And then I am going to overlap the rotation for which I have an animation. And I'm basically just uh, animating it 180 degrees. I also have a script uh, on this called Ease and Wiz that is performing an elastic out uh, ease. Okay. So now back to my shapes. I'm going to select them all just the same as I do with layers. And I have my driver layer at the top. I'm going to click overlap. And you can see that rather than type layers, it now says type shapes. And then I also get the shapes icon. And it sees that my driver will be ellipse one. And here are the animating properties. So this, all of these properties are shared between all of these uh, ellipses. And if I open up my preferences panel, I have options checked for re renaming the driver, offset controls, factor by index controls, uh, index controls, as well as color labels. I'll click OK. Overlap will run. And then I get all of these controls. Since there's only one layer, I get them all on uh, the shape layer that contains all of the shapes. So I just collapsed them. And uh, let's first. Uh, it doesn't look like anything's happened because uh, these ellipses are all beneath this top driver. So I'm going to first use the anchor point and drive these out. Actually, let me go back to the first keyframe here. Or sorry, first frame. I'm going to set that to 500. And then I'm going to use the size offset and drop this down about minus 130. And now, uh, because I, I use the anchor point offset here, if I use my rotation factor, I can actually distribute these radially. So I'll go to 45 for the rotation factor, and I'll get a full circle. And now, if I was to scrub through the timeline, you can see I have uh, overlap happening, but these ellipses are all crossing over each other's paths, so it doesn't really look like a physical object until the very end whenever the they're not crossing over each other anymore which looks kind of cool but I'd like to uh, have these behave almost as one full object so what I'm gonna the way I'm gonna do that is by going to these overlap indices here and setting them all to the same value so I'll set them all to one and then I'll go to frame delay and I'll probably bump it up about well just one frame and now if I ran preview, I get a nice follow through on this animation after the dial turns. It's almost like a spring loaded uh, secondary action that happens. So that is an example of follow through and uh, using overlap with shape layers. This concludes the Overlap Essentials tutorial. If you'd like to learn more ways you can use Overlap, please check out the other tutorials on the AE Scripts YouTube channel or on BlastFrame.com. Thanks a lot for your interest in Overlap. Oh, 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 oh